Okay, for this video I'm going to show you how to graph and sketch um, and solve uh, polynomial inequalities, or also known as quadratic inequalities, and I'm going to use a sign chart to show you how to do that. It's probably a good idea uh, going through these problems is to first figure out what is a polynomial inequality or a quadratic inequality. Well, take a look at the example that I have written for you here. You'll notice that it's x squared plus 3x minus 10. That looks like a quadratic uh, equation, doesn't it? Or quadratic uh, inequality in this particular case. And it's exactly right. It's a quadratic because it has a degree of 2. It's a polynomial because it's a trinomial. So, in a sense, both of these in this particular example are correct. They're both polynomials and quadratics. The difference is that we're not solving where it's not equal to zero. It's going to be greater than zero. So what you've got here is an inequality and not an equality. Now, how do you solve these? These are a little bit more difficult. What we're asking you to do is to find all the x's that you can plug into this side of the equation that will result in an answer that's greater than zero. Okay, now how do you do that? All right, so let me, let me show you an easy way to do this using something called a sign chart. Now, we're just doing, going to ignore, the first step is to ignore the inequality, all right? And I want you to solve this e uh, inequality as if it were an equality. Let me just write this off to the side here so you can see that all the time. And let's just rewrite it like this for right now. And you'll notice that you can actually solve this particular problem by factoring, can't you? You'll notice that it'll be x plus 5 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. And once you've done that, that means that either this factor or this factor must be 0 in order for this to be true, right? So we're going to say x plus 5 is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is 0, which means that x is negative 5, or x is a positive 2. Let me just put these as steps. I, I like to put these little Roman numerals down here for steps. Okay, now, these, these x's, or the x-intercepts, are also called the zeros of the problem. You'll hear that uh, referenced in some in some textbooks and some teachers will call it that. This is also called finding the zeros. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and do a quick sketch of our parabola. Okay, there's the, there's the zero. This is where our parabola crosses the x-axis. You know, so it'll cross at negative 5. So let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it crosses at positive 2. 1, 2. Now, you'll notice a couple other things if you remember how to interpret your uh, quadratic equations correctly. I know that my parabola is going to open upward because my a value is positive. And I know that it's going to cross the y-axis at negative 10 because of the c value. I don't know if you remember that, but we'll just assume that you do. So let's just say that this is negative 10 down here. And since it opens upward, my parabola is going to look something like this. Oh, that's not a good parabola. There we go. A little bit better. Okay, kind of excuse some of that. Now, what I have done by doing this is I've created three regions in this problem. What I've basically said is I want to, I've got x's that are all the way up to negative 5. I've got x's that are somewhere between negative 5 and positive 2. And I've got x's that are somewhere from positive 2 all the way up to infinity. Now I need to put a circle around this, by the way, on the zeros because, remember, it can't be equal to 0. If I were to plug 2, for example, into this equation, 2 squared is 4 plus 
6 is 10, 10 minus 10 is 0. 0 is not greater than 0, so I can't include that. That would be finding where it equals 0. So I'm going to put a big circle around there. But I've created three regions. And the first region is everything down here. It's everything from negative infinity all the way up to negative 5. And I'm going to use my interval notation and write it that way. In my middle region, I've got everything from negative 5 all the way up to positive 2. And I'm going to use interval notation for that. And in my third region, I've got everything from positive 2 all the way up to positive infinity. And again, I use my interval notation for that. What you want to do to solve these is you want to choose a test point out of each one of these, put them through the equation, and see if it works. And whatever which ones work is your answer. But I'm going to show you a faster way, and this is using what's called a sine chart. So let's rewrite these three regions again. Negative infinity, negative 5, parentheses around each. Negative 5 to positive 2, parentheses around each positive 2 to positive infinity, again, parentheses around each. And I want you to create this little chart like this. What you're going to put along, across the top are the regions. Okay, and again, the regions are defined by wherever your zeros were. Okay, those are the, those are the boundaries for each of your regions, and those are the zeros. We'll call them boundaries. Along the side of your chart, I want you to put in the factors. Now remember what the factors were for this problem. x plus 5, x minus 2. So let's put those down here. Now this is how the sine chart works. In your region, I want you to choose a random number out of here. And let's just choose something like, I don't know, let's say negative 6, because I know that negative 6 is just a little bit inside the region of here. If you put a negative 6 into your factor, you get negative 6 plus 5. That's going to result in a negative number, isn't it? So I'm going to put down a negative number. And again, any number that you choose inside this region will result in a negative number in your factor. Choosing that same negative 6, negative 6 minus 2, again, is a negative number, isn't it? Now, look what happens. When you multiply a negative times a negative, what do you get? You get a positive number, don't you? Now, is a positive number greater than 0? And the answer is yes. That means that every number inside this region is going to work. So this is a good region. We want that one. Now look what happens in this region here. Let's choose, I don't know, let's try 0, because that's right in the middle of the region, isn't it? Or close to the middle. If I go 0 plus 5, I result in a positive number. 0 minus 2, I get a negative number. When you multiply a positive times a negative, you get a negative number. Is a negative number greater than 0? The answer is no. This region does not work. Again, just choose a number out of here, plug it into the factors, tell me whether you get a positive or a negative, and then multiply them. It works great, doesn't it? Let's try a number out of this region. How about positive 3? It's just somewhere on the other side of 2. So positive 3 plus 5 is a positive number. Positive 3 minus 2 is a positive number. A positive times a positive is a positive. And again, a positive number is greater than 0, okay? Which means that that region works as well. And there's your answer, these two shaded regions. For a final answer, what you would do, and I'll just write here as my step 6, you would say the answer to that inequality at the beginning is negative infinity to negative 5, union, or or, Remember that word means or. 2 positive infinity. And that is your final answer.
Okay, so again, let me just go through the steps to make this easy for you. In your original problem, go ahead and factor it, and that's called finding the zeros. These become the boundaries. These two numbers become the boundaries, or depending on how many you have, right? You might have three, three factors, but these become the boundaries of your regions. Then go ahead and write each one of the regions according to interval notation. And you might have to look that up and how to do that, but you, it's pretty straightforward. Go ahead and list your sign chart by putting the regions along the top and then whatever factors you had from the factored problem along the side. Choose a number out of the region, plug it in, tell me if you, it results in a positive or negative number. Once you do that, multiply these and say a negative times a negative is a positive. And then check that against your original problem. And if the answer is true, that'll work. If the answer is not, it doesn't. Okay, I hope that was helpful.